Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As mentioned, the Word of God upon which we base our meditation this morning is the Old Testament lesson written in the book of Daniel, chapter 12. And may God bless this, our meditation on his holy word. In the name of Jesus who endured the cross so that we might shine like stars in heaven forever. Well, you may have noticed that the stock market has gone up. How are your investments doing? Now, even if you don't have stocks and bonds or have real estate holdings, you're an investor. We all are. Our entire lives are spent investing our time, our talents, and our money. Most of us invested in a college education. And we celebrated the reward when we graduated, had our degree, and got a good job. We started a savings account or invested in a business opportunity. And we celebrated the payoff when we bought that new house, that car, or our winter residence in Arizona. We invested years in our children and celebrated the payoff when they were finally out from under our houses and on their own. Yes, our entire lives are spent making investments and reaping the payoffs. So today, let's celebrate a payoff we haven't received yet, but will. We know it's coming. As Christians, believers in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we'll receive a glorious payoff in eternity. After, as Daniel foretells in the words of our text, we've made it through those tough and trying last days, after we're declared not guilty on Judgment Day because of our faith in Jesus, Daniel says we will shine like the brightness of the heaven and like the stars forever and ever. Truly, we will be saints triumphant, shining like the stars. Now, the word of God before us this morning isn't for the faint-hearted. It's not a passage that the all roads lead to the same goal people will ever quote. In plain and simple words, Daniel describes and explains what happens before, during, and after Jesus returns to judge. Well, first, let's look at what's going to happen before the end of this world. Now, our text is at the end of Daniel's fourth vision about the end times. And in this last end, year end or end time prophecy, Daniel says, <clears throat> Then at that time, Michael, the great prince who stands over your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress that has not happened from the first time that there was a nation until that time. At that time, your people will be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Now, Jesus quotes this verse in speaking about a time of testing for God's people, and as he speaks about the events leading up to the final judgment, Jesus said, for at that time there will be great distress, unlike any that has happened since the beginning of the world until now, and unlike any that will happen again. If those days were not shortened, no one would be saved. For the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Now this time being spoken of in this verse refers and was fulfilled in part when Roman armies destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD. But this prophecy will only receive its complete fulfillment in the last days just before Jesus returns to judge and to save. Now our world during its tortured centuries of existence has seen disasters of many kinds. 
Hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, droughts, famines, plagues that have killed many, two world wars and the threat of nuclear wars. But our world has seen nothing like this distress that will come at the end of the world. You see, the Hebrew word that Daniel uses for stress means that it pictures, it paints a picture of someone being bound up, trapped, unable to move or defend oneself, being totally helpless. And this stress, distress will be brought on by the devil, the enemy of God and his people. The devil will use all his evil forces in a final effort to destroy the kingdom of God. Now as we draw closer to the last day, distress will inflict the world, but especially Christians. All God's enemies will lash out in de desperate fury to, deceive, to seduce God's people, to cause us to fall away from our faith in Jesus and our trust in God to provide and protect us. Now as we hear Daniel's dire predictions, does it possibly seem like we could be in those last days? How often don't we as Christians feel that we are fighting a losing battle? In the courts, in the schools, in society in general, we always seem to be on the defensive in a world bent on persecuting Christ and Christians. As individuals in the church, what we believe, teach, and confess is under attack. God's word <clears throat> exposes and condemns as sin, abortion, homosexuality, gender identity, transgenderism, same-sex marriage, and all sex outside of marriage. Yet to speak out and label such sins as sin is met with opposition, ridicule, and even hatred. God's gospel proclaiming Jesus Christ as the one and only way to heaven, well, that's considered narrow-minded, bigoted, and archaic, and no longer believed by a vast majority of people in our world. Many in society and even within churches today have rejected God's word and believe instead the lies of Satan. Now, as you and I face this distress and all these attacks on our faith, how to react? Do we sit in silence? Do we cower in fear? Do we grumble and complain and loudly lament the saddest state of our world? Well, Jesus promises to send help. He sends Michael earlier, described as a chief prince of the angels. Michael and his angels will literally stand over, protect, and defend God's people. So no matter what kind of stress, no matter what kind of persecution we face, we can be certain that Daniel will be successful in his task. Jesus will keep us safe. No one can snatch us out of his hand. The huffing and puffing of all the enemies of God and his people will end when God says final deliverance, or as Daniel says, everyone who is found written in the book will be saved. Our names, the names of all saints, were written in his book before the beginning of time. Paul says God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world so that we would be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adore, adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. He did this in accordance with the good purpose of his will. Our Savior God assures us of victory. His angels watch over us. We can rely on Jesus to protect and deliver us during our times of distress on this earth. Now that, dear Christians, doesn't, going to, doesn't mean that we're going to be free of all danger, sadness, sickness, or sorrow. 
not as we live life in this sinful world. But God promises that he will use such troublesome times to keep us close to him. Our weaknesses should remind us of his strength. Earlier, Daniel had said, some of those who have insight will stumble so that they may be refined, purified, and made white until the time of the end. Our faith is strengthened when it's tested. God knows how much you can handle, and he will not test you beyond what you are have ability. God knows us better than we know ourselves. And he gives us strength to endure, and he promises that all things will work together for good to those who love him. Yes, Jesus will deliver us in time of stress. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Truly in the last days, in this time of distress, we can rely on Jesus to protect us and deliver us from all our enemies, just as he has promised. The victory is ours. Now later God instructed Daniel to seal up these prophecies so that Christians of future generations, saints of all times, you and I today, would be warned and know what to expect. God wanted these prophecies preserved so that we, his saints today, know that even as we face great distress and trouble in our world, Christ will give us the ultimate, final, complete victory. Then as the last day, Jesus will raise all the dead. Daniel says, many who are sleeping in the dusty ground will awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame, to everlasting contempt. Let's look at that second group of people first. Those who reject Jesus and his word. Yes, unbelievers will be raised from their graves on the last day, not to live, but to suffer eternally. In the revelation of St. John, we hear those who are cowardly, unbelieving, detestable murderers, adulterers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all the liars will have their share in the lake, burning with fire and sulfur. Daniel says unbelievers will wake to shame. Now this Hebrew word means something that causes a person to walk away in disgust. Picture walking along a road and passing a dead animal that's been hit by a car. It's bloated body covered with maggots. You hold your nose and get away as quickly as possible. On judgment day, believers will be made to feel this kind of shame and disgust for themselves, all because they've rejected Jesus, the one who could save, have saved them from the fires of hell. Daniel also says unbelievers will be raised to everlasting contempt. Again, the Hebrew word pictures something that brings complete dishonor and disgrace. Because they rejected the atoning work of Jesus Christ, they will have to stand before God on their own. In John's picture of the judgment in Revelation, we read, I also saw the dead, great and small, standing in front of the throne, and books were opened. Another book was also opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged by the things written in the books or according to what they'd done. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Picture standing before God, the almighty God, who hates and says he must punish sin as, the opening, as he opens the book of your life and reads every sin that you've ever committed in thought, word, or deed. The time you sashed your mom or disrespected and disobeyed your father. The time you fought with a sibling or made fun of a classmate. 
The time you lied to your spouse, or you got angry with a friend or a co-worker. The time you cussed out the guy who cut you off on the road. Well, that's what unbelievers face. They'll be judged by all their sins. And then they simply won't be wiped out. Their contempt, Daniel says, will be everlasting. They will exist in eternal spiritual and physical torment beyond description, eternally separated from God and all good. And believers also will be raised on that day, but with nothing to fear. You see, God isn't going to open the book of your life. He's going to really open the book that is the book of life. See, so he won't open the book of your life with page after page of your sins listed. Instead, he opens that book of life where only our names are recorded. And they're written there in the saving blood of Jesus. On that day, we will indeed be saints triumphant, clothed in the robe of Christ's perfect righteousness. You see, with his resurrection, Jesus guaranteed our resurrection, for he proved that he had power over death itself. And where when raised again on that last day, we can look forward to a glorious life with our Savior Jesus in heaven that will never end. Now all this you and I can look forward to only because we believe that Jesus lived and died for us. Without his saving work, there'd be nothing to look forward to, for none of this would be possible. But with him, his saving work, it's already accomplished. It's a done deal and it's an accomplished fact. Yes, all Christians will be delivered by Christ and will indeed be saints triumphant, receiving the shining glory of heaven with him forever and ever. But there's something else included in our text. How much glorious it will be as we lead others to know their Lord and Savior Jesus so they too shine like the stars in heaven. You know, I believe that we can be lazy Christians. We can say our prayers and we can read some family devotions. We come to church on Sunday and we attend Bible class but then we go home and we place Jesus, his word, and the church on the shelf or in the closet until next Sunday. Now we're confident that the moment we die, we, our soul will be with Jesus and our loved ones in heaven. We're content to sit back and keep the goodness of salvation to ourselves. Because we're saved by grace and not by our good works, we know that we'll still be in heaven even if we don't share God's word with our unchurched, unbelieving friends, relatives, acquaintances, or neighbors. But our text talks about how additional blessings will be there for those who see it as their goal to help God's kingdom grow. Daniel writes, those who have insight will shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who bring many to righteousness will shine like stars forever and ever. Imagine, Jesus will give special recognition and extra brightness to those who have insight and teach others the saving word of our God. So don't let the words you hear today sit on the shelf until next Sunday. Don't just be a Sunday morning Christian. Use the law to show your friends, relatives, and neighbors their sins and terrifying consequences of unbelief as Daniel has depicted in our text. Use the sweet gospel you've heard and believe to point them to the perfect life Jesus led for them and the innocent death he suffered for them 
to take away their sin, guilt, and punishment. Through your words and actions, point them to Jesus and his perfect righteousness. You see, God wants each of us to be insightful and wise. He wants us to be soul winners. Our most urgent responsibility as Christians is to win souls for Jesus and then to nurture him with his saving word. You know, we invest our time, our talents, and our treasures for payoffs in this life. Payoffs that won't last. Payoffs that aren't going to matter in a hundred years. Why not invest some of your time, talents, and treasures for a payoff in heaven that moths can't eat, thieves can't steal, and rust can't destroy? Invest in souls. Invest some of your time to help God with God's work right here at King of Kings. Invest some of your time and your talent to welcome newcomers, to encourage and strengthen your fellow members, to teach young and old about their Savior. Invest some of your hard-earned dollars to keep God's kingdom going and growing. There's no better investment than in spreading God's word, holding high the cross of Jesus for all to see. Well, as Daniel said, and we've studied, times will indeed get tougher before Jesus returns. But Jesus promised that he'll bless us, protect us, and keep us safe during those times of distress. Then he will raise us up and take us to those glorious mansions above. And he promises that then, and when we get there, we will be saints triumphant shining like the stars. I'll see you again in the glories of heaven. Amen. Please rise.